The pilot is really interesting, and it's something that really you have to kind of wrap your head around. Which I'm wondering if you guys, as actors, I, mean, I guess you guys are just playing one side or the other. So is it is it confusing, or at least maybe you're getting some of I don't know. How, how was it for you guys, I guess, from the actor's perspective? They did something really smart from the start, which is they broke each scene down into red or green. So on the scripts, it actually has an R or a G. <laughs> so okay. I read the scripts and totally refer to that because half the script I don't really have to pay attention to. <laughs> right. I'm dead. It's there's, there's different, you know, in the, in the kitchen, the house, there's also some certain different decorations that they use. You can also look for some green decorations in the kitchen in, in my world and some some red decorations in, in the red world and just little things like that can help you That's keep cool. on They do it a little yeah. bit with our wardrobe yes. too, you'll see. Uh -huh. yeah. right. All kind of shades of blue or green yes. in yes. our it's world just and just red. Little things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, do you have an idea of which world is the real world? Have, have they told you? Well, or did they keep it I totally mean, secret? <laughs> My world is a real world, if you ask Tara, so that's sort of how I've been looking at it. Um, of course, as a viewer, I'm interested, but for me, it's green all the way. I think yeah. the trick of the show is really to keep the audience invested in both sides equally, and of course, Michael doesn't want to choose, so he is really in invested and in love with both sides, and um, therapists have arguments in favor of theirs, and, um, and of course, we can commit fully to ours, so right. it's, up for, it's up to the audience. Well, for, for me as Dylan, I have no idea, but for Rex, you know, I, th I think he thinks it's green. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Hannah thinks it's red. Right. I think Tara Absolutely. thinks it's green. <laughs> <laughs> team red. <laughs> <laughs> team green. <laughs> we got two team green members here. I know. So, so I think it's interesting, you said you don't, you don't always read the whole script, because I guess no, it's good. I I do. I but do read the whole script. I, I, I actually no, only I read my lines. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't nailing you on that. But in some ways, it's probably better that you don't know what's going on in the other world, so it doesn't get into your head maybe when you're That's hearing, true. you know, when you're hearing what the other actors are saying, because you could get pulled in that direction. Sure. I'm, t I'm too interested to hear what happens. Mm -hmm. to the, <laughs> yeah, I, you it's can't help me. but get invested in the whole yes. picture. And what's interesting too, what they're doing with the writing is a lot of the cases that they're solving kind of resonate in Michael's personal life. So we actually, the audience gets to learn a lot more about what he's struggling with internally through these cases. So even if it's in the green world, I, I a little bit is unraveled mm -hmm. each time. Yeah, ringing. With each episode, a little bit more is unraveled with the character, so we get to learn more. And whether it's red or green, you know, we're all discovering. Yeah, that's very true. Pick up what you're going through and how that sort of affects in your world. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now, what attracted you to? the show in the first place I the I mean it's an incredible plot and I will leave the ins and outs to Howard Gordon and Kyle Killen but as far as why I, it appealed to me so much is at the heart of the story is a man who is so in love with his wife and his son that he would rather split his world in two than to lose either one of them and that's something uh, I was compelled by and as a middle child of five kids and my parents are still together I'm very close to my family so I can I can understand that fierce love and devotion not wanting to let anyone go so you'd rather live this kind of insane life than to part with them and I thought that was just beautiful good answer and his own sanity suffers I mean and, and so it's, it's interesting to watch that I mean that's the price he pays really yeah. Now, do you, have you guys thought about you know what your alternate world would be like? You know, this is something that's on shows like Friends, and even in some ways, like this is, the show's showing you whether it's in his head or it's really happening that there's two worlds. But have you thought about that as far as your own? Yeah. How I'd love to live in Colorado and have a theater company. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sure, that would be nice <laughs> to be able to have two. Two worlds. Oh, yeah. Ask me again in two hours after I'll be thinking about it now. I'm stuck I know. Now, I know. Like, now I'm going to be thinking about it. I'll be over there like, <laughs> I have an answer. Yeah. I mean, naturally, I mean, I've always wanted to be an actress, but there is something, every time I go home to Rhode Island, there's something about being in that small little town with my family. Of course, I wonder if maybe if I just stayed, what would that life be like? So that's, I guess, kind of that. 
see it. I know, and I'm a, a wife and a mother in my real life, and like, it's not that many years ago when I had neither of those people in my life, and so you do start to wonder, what if I'd chosen this instead, and you know, I have a whole other set of circumstances, and so. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be able to relate to that. Yeah. You're going to be thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I put the idea in your head. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> he is. How old are you, John? I'm 14. 14. Yeah. So okay. you got some time in your head. Got some time. Yeah. That's me I'm like 10 years old. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about how the show will evolve from the first episode? What's kind of the structure of each episode that we can expect? Is it going to be similar to the first episode? Will there be more of a, like a procedural sort of side to it or I think every episode is different in its own way. Mm -hmm. you know, I think um, there's all there's obviously a different procedural every week. Um, but there's just little things that uh, can be picked at more in the next episode or the next episode. I feel like every episode is different in its own way and then things get brought up again. It's just it's all kind of their own little you can you can follow it without watching every episode but what are you going to explain this better than I am? I, I think that there is sort of a procedural element to the show in that he is a police detective and he's solving these cases every episode. And, uh, so there is that, but it's also emotionally grounded. So you are very much connected to what's going on between the characters and how they all intertwine. So that's what's great about this show, is you do have that, the mysteries of solving the case, but you also are pulled into his personal life and what's going on with that drama. And I think there's a little bit less of him trying to determine which reality is real and just sort of allowing both to be in his heart and his mind and solving these cases and then there's this question that's going to come up in season one about the car accident and was there more behind it mm -hmm. and um, so that that is going to be developing throughout season one um, but the cop drama is is consistently strong and um, we see bits of the family and and that it, it evolves you know yeah they definitely keep those cop case is so interesting. Yes. That's what I love about it. Every script well, is like, Howard Gordon. Yeah. it's not your typical cop show. They add a little twist in every episode. Mm -hmm. so how can we make this case interesting? Alright, we'll put it in this world too. Yeah. <laughs> the details from yeah, this. Yeah, kind of so. parallel the yeah. dream case versus yeah. the real case. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things they can do. It's just like one of my favorite little bits, I'm just going to give it away, is... Um, you wake up one morning and you're like, the laundry doesn't smell like it used to. And then he w comes to my reality and he sees me putting fabric softener in the washing machine. And then a couple days later, you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so he like steals p bits of information that can kind of Yeah, like Michael kind of picks it up from her. Yeah. He doesn't mind, I smell it. Yeah. It's better, you know, it's more, it reminds Rex of his mom. So there's yeah. little things that, little things about the episode that also bring Hannah and Rex together through certain things, like, that you'll see. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's one of them. That's yeah. Like, who cares about spoilers? We'll just yeah. <laughs> we'll just give away everything. <laughs> now, do your characters know about? Are they ever going to find out that he has a dream life and that he is, he's not sure if you guys are real or not? It's, it's like it was a conflict um, in the pilot between Hannah and Michael. I mean, she knows that he's dreaming about the, about Rex, and it it's really unsettling for her because. He wants to share it with her, and she's really in a different space emotionally, and wants to move move forward in a way that he thinks is too quick. So um, there's a disconnect that's going on. So he stops. He starts to shut down about the dreaming, and just talks to the therapist about it. I mean, so it's really in the, the world of therapy that he can divulge it all. <clears throat> you don't know anything about his dreaming. No, I was actually just about to say I can't wait to see if they ever bring up Rex finding out about finding out about it about the dreams and and seeing how he deals with it because Rex and Michael are slowly finding ways to bond better and become closer with each other and communicate better and I feel like Michael may, but this is just my prediction I don't know I have no idea they find the need to or the the opportunity to tell him and Rex might totally just think he's crazy but mm. off, I don't know. Like, you can do something like that. Mm. But I'm waiting to see when Rex finds out. I'm really interested to see what happens yeah. there. Yeah. But
I'm interested to see what they do with characters like Tara, who are very much alive and could live in the other world as much as they live in the world they are in right now. So that'll be interesting to see how they that develops and, and what the writers decide to do with that. Mm -hmm. And they say that they might do this with the therapists as well, so that they're not just in their, th their offices, that they may be characters in the world, you know, that Hannah could run into Dr. Evans even though she's of the green and, you know. Well, or maybe Michael could run into Dr. Evans in the red world. Oh, interesting. Or yeah. Dr. Evans in the whoa. <laughs> I'm just realizing the show's yeah. a lot of places right. to go. Right, or Dr. Evans could find evidence that Hannah is alive and well, and so then she starts to question her, yeah. you know. So anyway, we're just <laughs> guessing. <laughs> 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 we should just all come up with guesses right now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>